Today's uh, special music uh, is a good friend of ours from India. He's from, from Bangalore, but he, he's not there very much. He is uh, the world's most traveled musician, and that's not an opinion. He's actually uh, received a world record. He's been to every single country in the world. He, pray, he plays for the poorest of the poor, the richest of the rich. He's open for everything from the World Cup uh, to the Olympics. He gets through here about once a year on this very important and special day. His name uh, is Benny Prasad. He will be, uh, this is, we just added, he agreed to do this, uh, 6.30 tonight. If you come to the meeting early at Thomas Road, he's going to do a mini concert uh, right before the meeting. Welcome all the way from India, one of the world's best known musicians, Benny Prasad. Thank you, Johnny. Good morning, everybody. Come on, you can do that better. Good morning, everybody. Yes, that was a quick lesson on good morning. Well, I want to thank Jesus for giving me this gift of life. And every time I come here, I'm just so thrilled to see so many young people um, on your way to missions. If you have not decided, today is your deadline for that, actually. And, um, and you know, it's, it's, it's so wonderful to live. I just celebrated my 30th. 38th birthday and at the age of 16 the doctors had given me six months to live I was born with asthma and from the age of two till the age of 16 I was on wrong medication on high dosage of cortisone steroids and as a result of that 60% of my lungs got damaged and my immune system broke down and I developed rheumatoid arthritis at the age of 12 by accident I was hit by a javelin and my uh, spinal cord was damaged and everything went wrong in my life. Well, that's what the human said. And my father, being an aerospace scientist, uh, he expected me to become like him. And I became the scum of the family. I was thrown out of school in my 10th grade, saying that you are not worth studying. You are useless. You are good for nothing. These were the words that were spoken over my life for 16 years, where medically they told me you will not live any longer in education as well as society and family. They looked at me and they said, Benny, you are a shame and a curse to the family. And having no hope, no talent, no life, nothing left in me, I contemplated to commit suicide at the age of 16. Even if you're, if you're really sitting down and wondering, Benny, can God use me in missions? I want to tell you that there are so many Bennies like me out there who needs the gospel. And you are one among them who can really go and share that gospel. And and at, at the lowest point of my life, when I wanted to kill myself, I heard the voice of Jesus Christ saying, Benny, even though you are called useless, I still need you. I said, Jesus, why do you need me when the whole world says I'm useless? He said he could transform my life and make me a new person. And I said, okay, I have nothing to offer. All that I have is my broken life and six months to live. He says, that's enough for me to start a new work in you. And that's what he has done. I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And... And, and I've, already, I've, already ex, I've already surpassed the expiry date that the doctors had put on my life, actually. And, and I'm just so thrilled to live this. And in 2004, I asked Jesus, what is your call for my life? The Bible says, God's ways are higher than man's ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And I want to tell you, a Christian life is the most exciting life to live. And a life that is surrendered in Christ is just so adventurous. My life is more than James Bond movie. Because it's a reality. James Bond is only a movie. Mine is a reality. And in 2002, with $25 a month, being a YWAM missionary, I asked Jesus, what do you want to do with my life? Because my dream was to go to one country. He said, Benny, I want you to travel to every country by 2010. I said, Jesus, this is impossible. Till today, there has never been one example in the history of mankind, whether it is Michael Jackson or Maria Carey or whoever it is. They have never been to every country in the world. How can I, being a broken person, being able to achieve this? He says, Benny, what is impossible for you is possible for me. And what it takes, my dear friends, today is to surrender your brokenness and your life into the hands of Jesus. And he will shape it after his will. And so I said, Jesus, as long as you are my provider, I will be your traveler. We had a good deal. I said, I will live a life of faith and you provide for me. So today, this is my one passport. 
Uh, this passport is my travel record to every country in the world. And on 22nd of November 2010, I arrived in my last country, Pakistan, and I broke six world records. And one among them was I became the fastest man in the history to travel to every country in the shortest time, 245 nations, including Antarctica, in six years, six months, and 22 days. If Jesus can use my life to make history for his glory, I'm sorry, I don't have time to wait for your clapping. I'm not trying to be rude. But if Jesus could do that in my life, Today he has a plan for your life. And he took me to amazing nations. One among them was North Korea. Last year I was invited by the government of North Korea to come and perform for the 100th birth anniversary of their founder Kim Il-sung. 834 performers were chosen from all over the world and I was the only Indian chosen from my country. And it was a great opportunity to play, but more so an opportunity to share the gospel. Yes, if you share the gospel, you don't need to be a prophet to understand that you will be killed. But I understood in the word of God that if anyone tries to save their life, will lose it. If anyone loses their life for the sake of Christ, will find it. So I inform my parents, there's a big possibility that I might be killed in North Korea. So if you don't hear from me on the 17th of April, that's a mutual understanding that either I'm killed or in prison and I will see you in heaven. Because for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. So I went to North Korea so excited to live and to die for Jesus. Two spies followed me every single day of my life, every single minute, in fact. When you have two ungodly spies following you all the time, what do you do? You share the gospel. Because they're always with you. They will never leave you. They might forsake you, but they will never leave you. And since they're always with you, what a great opportunity to talk about Jesus. You don't need to go to North Korea to talk about Jesus. Jesus is putting a nation in your heart. Be obedient to him. Say yes to him. And I got into trouble. Sure, next day the, my interpreter went and informed to the official that Benny is doing this because I used her to translate my testimony to the spies. Now I'm in big trouble. It's sure I'll be killed. But the right perspective is what a great opportunity to stand in front of the official. And I shared my testimony knowing that I might be killed. But the official asked me a question. How could you be so sure you heard the voice of Jesus at 16? It could have been your own imagination. I told him, sir, my own imagination told me to kill myself. It is the voice of Jesus that gave me life and life in abundance. And he heard my testimony. And I want to tell you, my friends, be courageous, even to the point of death, to share the love of Jesus Christ. Don't ever fear your life because Jesus is in charge. I was not killed in North Korea because it was not my time to die. He knows my time, actually. And in the end, 12 musicians were chosen out of 834 performers, and I was one among the 12 to be awarded by the government of North Korea. And I played this Shout to the Lord, the song which I'm going to play, My Jesus, My Savior, Lord, there is none like you. In a nation like that, on their national TV, if God could use a Christian, an Indian, to perform on this guitar, a guitar which God helped me to design in 2004 for the Olympic Games in Greece, if God could pick a broken, worthless child like me, written off by society, to design the world's first guitar with drums inside, there is nothing impossible for Jesus to do in your life. If, if he could pick up, give me a passport like this, 14 books, to go and share the good news to the nations, there is nothing impossible. I am just so excited. And I'm going to play this song, My Jesus, My Savior, Lord, There Is None Like You. And again, with arthritis, when I play this instrument, even the medical doctors say, this has to be God and God alone. And just to conclude with, when I broke the world record, I had a hat which said, thank you, Jesus. And CNN was the first news channel to interview me. And they said, sir, that is a religious statement. Please take off your hat because we are a secular channel. And I'll tell you, you want to share the gospel, share it creatively. Nobody can stop you. And so I asked Jesus for an idea because the whole world is going to interview me for achieving this feat. And I want to make sure that Jesus is known. I am not ashamed of the gospel. He gave me life when doctors gave me six months to live. He gave me protection. He gave me this beautiful future. How can I keep Jesus secret? No. It is sin for me to keep Jesus just to myself. So he gave me this beautiful idea of designing this new hat. And my hat says, thank you, Jesus. I'm an Indian. This is not a religious statement. It is a patriotic statement. And hence, nobody can stop me. You know, nobody can stop me from wearing these things. And, and, and if even, even news channels, they would come up to me and say, what is this on your head? I said, 
well, I'm proud to be an Indian. The cameraman says, do a close-up on his hat also. At the United Nations, they told me, you cannot share about Jesus. I said, fine, but I wore my hat, which talked about Jesus all the time. My friends, if you really want to talk about Jesus, nobody can stop you. So don't use excuses.